Hey guys, this is Coach Chris. Welcome to my channel where we break down international level fights for strategies and tactics that you can use in your own matches. Uh, today we got the Uzbekistan Olympian gold medalist against Jordan uh, in the 7th Asian Taekwondo Championships. Um, I'm assuming this was recent. Um, this was sent to me by Christian Lang via Instagram, so thank you for, it looks like you screen recorded it, so thank you for that. Let's get into it. What we're going to see a lot of here is a lot of front leg poke and mind games around the front leg poke so I, I i like the i like the strategies that are starting to develop here and i also like this because it's a contrast to a lot of the um a lot of the matches i have been covering before where it's a lot of clinch work this is more outside range game so let's get into it here like i said a lot of poke so far both players kind of fighting on the line both players seem like they have similar weapons it's just the front leg cut and being accurate with that and finding ways around it. And you're gonna, if you guys watch close, you're gonna start to see a pattern develop. And if you guys can guess it before I actually say it, then good for you guys. So I'm not sure, this, it's pattern's already kind of starting to be established. I don't know if you guys are catching this. Okay, so if you guys didn't catch this, the small pattern that's been established, um, either consciously or unconsciously by Jordan here. Uh, it might have been word from his coach, may have been something else. Is a single poke and then return fire. Oh wait, I think this is here. That's already the adaptation. So here, single poke, return fire. One more time, single poke by Uzbekistan, return fire. With this information, so he just did the same defense twice in a row. Um, at this level, it's kind of assumed that, um, it's kind of assumed that you're not going to do that. And if you are doing that, the other guy's probably sitting on something. It could also be though that Uzbekistan thought, well, dude, if this guy's going to be dumb about it and stay in place and wait for my leg to go down, especially after the one, after he's expecting only one shot, then I'm going to go one, two, because he's probably going to try and go in on the second after he's probably going to try to go in after I do that first shot. So I'm going to try one, two, because the last two times he waited for my leg to go down and then he would counter. So in this situation, when I do the one, two, he's probably going to be waiting for my leg go to go down and that's when I'm going to go kick. So one more time, the full sequence, better established poke, return fire, one more time, poke, return fire, then I think in this situation, if is he actually, in my opinion, waited a little bit too long to do this kind of a progressive because you want your opponent in a slightly reactive state when you're trying to build onto these patterns, right? But a little bit, it could be that he's trying to think like, is this guy really, really just not gonna adapt or is he trying to do this to set me up? And then it could be that that's when Uzbekistan thought, okay, I'm gonna try it again anyway and let's, let's, let's try it. And that's why he waited longer than I would recommend to do before a progression drill. But here he goes for the one, two. Nice try. And then immediately he follows up. Um, Jordan follows up. And so no point, but good idea. Uzbekistan trying to establish a different kind of pattern now. Off. Nice, nice, nice. So also, um, let me rewind just a tiny bit just to verify something here. A little bit off balance. Okay, so in this case, um, not, not really too much to take away there. It's just Jordan was trying to apply pressure. Uzbekistan feeling he was losing, dictating the match, dictating the pace of the match, went for a counterattack, ended up scoring on that counterattack to reestablish. Um, oh, and he scored again. What? This kid's reaction times is unreal. Um, he, he did that second kick to try and reestablish uh, setting the, the one who's in control of the match. This is a good point here by him. Uh, great accuracy. And then I was saying great reaction time because usually after this, the pacing of the game has been 1-1, one, one, reset or one two reset one two reset jordan right here takes does a pretty good job trying to use that little timing reset to blitz 
Point scored, boom, nothing. Usually right here you expect a reset, but he doesn't even look at the score, which I really like, and then goes for the blitz anyway. Not many people, I mean, this guy's the Olympic gold medalist, so not many people are going to be wet ready for this. So this kind of a blitz right after an exchange like this is good. Boom, boom. And then that was so, it's so, I'm going to play this just its entirety so you guys can watch it because it's so, this blitz is so clean. Boom, boom. Fakes. Oh, wait, hold on. I, 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 I get so excited by how cleanly this guy relaxes the switch and then goes into the blitz. It's so nice. Boom, boom. And then he goes for the blitz. And so um, he, I think he gets the punch here. Good job for Uzbek to try and retreat and get that little, oh, smack the, smack the mic there. Um, try and get that little flick in. Not a bad, not really good reaction time by him. Really, really good blitz by Jordan though. I really like that. That is like the, that's like a perfect timing reset. Good fake. Um, so in this situation, well, obviously, uh, red has to press now. It's 30 seconds left. Uzbekistan now has a game plan. Now, after you've established that's going to happen, you just need to sit back and have an arsenal of things ready. So, uh, things like that front leg flick, it's well known. He has a great back kick and then he's flicking stuff to the face now, which he wasn't doing before. So now that he's doing it to kind of put the nail in the coffin is a good idea. Um, and it's, it's difficult for Jordan because uh, Uzbekistan's game is very, very tightly knit, so he's trying to find a way through the defense. And now that Uzbekistan doesn't have to really risk going forward that much, he can sit behind, he can sit back on this array of defense while applying forward pressure. So when you're versus like, how do we put this? He has the ability to sit on whatever defense he wants um, almost casually, whereas Red has to guess right. Otherwise, he's either he's um, either going to get scored on or is going to not score. And either of those is like detrimental versus if it's vice versa. Um, he can think about maybe just not even getting scored on. And he, he may not need, like if it's switched, obviously you have advantage. So that's long story short. That's what I'm trying to say. So good. I like what I'm trying to say also is Uzbekistan is doing a good job here. Still applying the forward pressure, but varying his defense. So it's harder for Jordan to establish a pattern and then break it to score a point that's not a bad idea there by jordan nice try i don't that was kind of a lug check but it's fine good job pulling it uh, i'm pretty sure this round is over nothing major happened oh did something? no he just got the gum junk i'm gonna do a small video on that um on that timing reset because that was that was pristine So going into the second round, it's going to be difficult for Jordan because there wasn't anything really that penetrated Uzbekistan's defense. It was just that blitz punch, right? Uzbekistan so far has that really accurate front leg. So he still has that going for him. He has that deadly back kick and uh, it's, it's hard to break that defense. No one's broken it. Not that I can tell. Um, Red's trying to find a different way in, trying to give different looks. Blue now is varying his defense quite a bit because he doesn't want Red to establish any kind of pattern. Not, that was a good reaction by Blue there um, for that punch. Against someone like this, uh, this is actually my second time watching it. The A good counter to this, which you can also see Husseini starting to do, is uh, doubling underneath because we can't use the hand and a, or bent cut to break this front leg anymore. So you have to nullify the front leg using a kick and still kick and get a second kick out there before um, before he's able to put his leg down. And the only way to really do that is a double that I can think of, or if you like trap back kick using like a like a cut back kick, something like that, where your first kick your first kick has to be a kick and it it has to like nullify their leg, but you also have to get your second kick up there, even though he's occupying the space before his leg comes down. So. The, one of the ways around that is a double, and you're going to see that soon, I think. So there, yeah, so there's the opening right there. Let's see if I can pause it. And so it's you're right there. If, if he's firing the, his um, bottom leg here on, underneath, boom, that's, that's kind of the timing you'd want for your double kick. You want the leg coming up right, right there. You're going to here, understand it's cancel. Look at the accuracy of the foot, though. That's that's right on target. Um, here, and then kick underneath. I think that's what Red sees. Oh, nice try. 
That was a nice job bearing the defense there. Oh, who's back does it? I think Red did it. Maybe I missed it and he did it already and I'm just I wasn't paying attention. Okay, well, so he's trying it there. Unfortunately, he fell down. Um, that was a good punch by Uzbekistan. 2-2, Two -two, even playing field. What do you do here? Well, the scary thing about this, knowing what we know about the players, is what's going to score or what he might try again is the double, right? But what's really terrifying is that Blue has a crazy back kick out of... And it's, it, it, he throws it from any angle. So that's his... Like, Blue's main weapon is a direct counter to what you can use to counter what he's using right now. So that's a, that's a little bit of a mind mind game and a rock, paper, scissors, hope you don't guess wrong kind of situation. And the payout for the back kick is twice as many points. So it's... Um, that's a, yeah, it's a scary proposition to get around. Yeah, I, and so for those of you guys who are thinking, why doesn't red follow up here? Why doesn't he follow up to the open side? It's specifically because blue has that crazy back ache. Like that's, it's something that if I were fighting Uzbekistan or someone who had a back ache like Uzbekistan, I may also just fight open stance and try and drill the flank until I can get a punch and follow up in the close. But even then it's like the back can still come out. <laughs> I, mean, I just want to point this out. This is a little bit old school fake here. <laughs> if he had scored on that, that would have been the best. Not bad by Red here. He's applying a lot of pressure. That's really un it was unfortunate. And then he scores the back kick, right? So that's a little bit of a nail in the coffin. Um, another possibility would be to trap front, trap back kick. So if that's also great by Blue. So long reset. Um, I say this a lot in every video. Uh, if you're ahead, and you, there's a reset that happens like this going straight for the head like this is a great idea because your opponent is probably thinking let's just how do we score so zero thoughts on defense zero thoughts about going back this is a great idea to go for the head now he's just playing defense i mean five points is a lot to catch up i think there's a um we're, we'll keep watching to the end in case you guys haven't seen this nice try with the double you could try and trap back that front leg but it's hard because it's a cut and i mean it's if you don't have a back kick like Uzbekistan, it's hard to get around a cut. That's also viable, though. Holy cow. I think maybe if... Um, I mean, obviously, if Red used that... He only used that once at the end of the first match. He only used then once at the end of the second match. I think if he utilized that more, it could have been a little bit scarier for Red to mount some kind of offense. Uh, to mount his, well, not some kind of offense, to mount the offense he was using because the threat of the spin. So overall takeaways of this, uh, I would rewatch this just for Jordan's blitz. That was phenomenal. Um, two, accuracy counts a lot. Uh, Uzbekistan here doing a great job with that front leg poke. Great job. Also, like I mentioned in the beginning, establishing a pattern, seeing what the reaction is, and then doing the doing the progression to beat that pat to beat that pattern. So. Is that uh, tech, from a technical standpoint? I mean, it's hard to beat this Uzbek guy. He's he's top of the world right now for for a reason. His defense, it's his defense is nuts. And then if you don't attack him, he just presses you and hits you with that accurate front leg. So if he has, uh, if he loses recently, someone please send me his fight. I want to see how it's done because I mean, this guy's this guy's on fire right now. Overall, great ideas both sides. Um, one of the options that this guy is starting to bring up now from Jordan is the. Uh, the trap not a bond instead of a trap back kick because it's harder to defend. It's harder to use a cut to defend the not a bond versus a cut. You still might get scored on, but you still might get scored on if you do a back kick anyway. So that's it for today, guys. And uh, if you guys have any more fights for me, please let me know. Like, share, and subscribe it really helps me out. And I'll see you guys next time.